Hey guys, this is Perry with Premier Guitar here at SIR Sound Studios in Nashville, Tennessee, hanging out with Minus the Bear guys for the very last run. Yep, this and, is it. Man, what a bummer. I mean, I'm glad that you guys can go on and do other things, but it's Absolutely. been a lot, a lot of crunchy tunes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a blast. It's been amazing. Yeah, man. Well, let's get to it. Um, yeah. I know you guys are in the middle of rehearsals and you're taking the time to do this. This is great. So this Aerodyne is your number one right now, huh? Yep, that's it. Uh, got it probably seven or eight years ago, and it's been pretty much what I've been using, um, at least on stage. It just feels good in the hand. I love the binding, it's so cool. Yep, yep. So are you more P, more J, or are you kind of in between with the pickups? Or uh, With the pickups, I actually, um, I keep them all hot. Uh, and funny enough, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because the last uh, rig rundown that we did, uh, I was reading the comments of, of folks and I had made a mention that I leave everything just open because that's just the Football. way I like to play. Sure, yeah. um, and there was, a, there was a commenter and it was great. And I'm looking at you, commenter. Uh, he was like, Corey's a fucking idiot, man. He doesn't know that like, if you like dial back just a little bit, you can get this and do that. And I was like, and what band do you play? I'm, I'm on stage. <laughs> yeah. This is just the way I'm doing it, man. I, don't, I mean, great, great advice. It's but. easy to say that from your mom's basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone's got an opinion. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I just leave them all up. Yeah. You know, I don't man, fuck how, around too much. How did you come to own that? It's really, really pretty. Uh, I bought it. Uh, I was having some serious back problems, um, and I, you know, I was. I heard that it was actually a little bit lighter, and it, it, is, it is considerably. Um, so I really just kind of bought it because of health reasons, because sure. some of these are just so heavy and They're honking. Um, <laughs> and it turns out that it, it plays like a dream and it sounds awesome. Yep. So um, in addition to the Aerodyne, you have a couple of backups as well. Yep. Uh, this is an old P bass that I picked up in New York. Uh, one of my old bases got lost in transit on an airline. Uh, so I had to buy one last minute, but that's been great. Uh, early 2000s model, pretty just standard P bass sounds like bass. They do that thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this is a jazz bass with um, like these kind of weird P bass, you know, configurations with the jazz. Um, once again, sounds bitching. Me awesome. Little Mexican made jazz bass, um, but it's great. It works. Yeah. Are you, yep. so are you, is one of these for like a different tuning or are these just straight backups? No, just backups right now. Uh, I've used this a lot on the last couple tours. Um, and then both of them uh, in the studio. And I just keep them just in case. And I'm guessing they sound pretty similar to the yeah, other one, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, in the Fender family. and For sure. Sounds yeah. bitching. Same so. pickup setup and stuff. Yep. Well, that's easy enough. And then we're going through the Varellin. Yeah. Um, the meat smoke, or as he called it, the merch smoke. Because my last name is Merchie. Awesome. Um, I don't ever want to play anything else except Varellin amps. It's that it, good, huh? Yeah. Um, you plug in and it, it, I always like to say it sounds like bass. Yeah. And it's, it's what it does. It does the loud. trick. It's like a, at least a hundred watts too, right? Like, yeah. It's yeah. a 300 watt, I think. Um, 300. Yeah. It's a, okay. it's a beast. This is one of his first ones. I think it's like, yeah, it's in the, the lower double digits. So, but yeah, great. But, uh, Seattle, this guy, Ben Varellen, who makes them out of Seattle. Yeah. Um, the little brother of the singer of Botch, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Yep. What a cool family legacy. Oh, he's, and he's just super talented. He's, you know, he's in all sorts of bands and he owns a bar in Seattle and I don't know how he has the time to do it, but he, he builds an, an amazing product. He's a busy, so. busy fella. Yep. And so I'm guessing this is a 810? Yep, old 810. I picked up from, uh, from a friend, uh, Todd Bell from Hey Mercedes and Braid. Um, I think I've been playing this since 2004. Um, and keeping it in really good condition. Uh, I kind of try to baby it, you know, so. Clearly the Tolex looks incredible. Yeah, I mean. yeah. It's got a nice patina on it at this point, so. Have you had to mod any of the bases or the amp or anything like that? It's just pretty stock? No, uh, replaced a couple speakers. Um, and that really, no, I really don't fuck around with too many mods. Sure. You know, and with, with the Varellin, he just built such a great amp that you don't really have to do too much with it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess that, uh, that takes us to pedals. That's right. All right. You don't have a ton on your board, but uh, I am not familiar with this uh, giant Varelin pedal. So is this like a preamp thing, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's, a, it's another one that uh, ben, ben makes. It's a preamp, and then it has a little boost to it um, just to kind of treat the another you know tone treater. Is it like an uh, always on kind of thing? Yeah, for the most part. Um, it just kind of depends on what the song is. But for most of this set, yeah, it's pretty much on. Um, 
while I have you and you got your bass on. Let's yep. hear it. Can we hear the clean? Yeah, yeah. Sound? Man, when you said, uh, I like the Varelin because it sounds like bass, it sure does. It sounds <laughs> like, like bass, like yeah. Bass, I, yeah. I really, you know, try not to screw around with with too many tones. There's so much stuff going on in this band with with different tones and pedals and, and everything that I really just try to just try to play the bass and totally. just try to keep it down on that level. Um, so this just works. It just gives it a little bit of a boost. Um, yeah, and then boost this isn't too crazy. It's a little hot. No, it's just, yeah. yeah, just a little, just a little flavor. And then just volume. Yep. Just a straight volume pedal. Um, and then this greed tone is another company, uh, out of Seattle. Uh, this guy, Greg builds those out of his basement. And once again, it's just a, a little distortion box, but it, it, it doesn't take away from the low end and you know, it's perfect for bass. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so you're not losing any frequency there. That, no, that's no, it's just kind of coloring it a little bit, throwing a little more dirt on it, and uh, but still here in the base. Is it so basically like two boosts? What was that second switch? Yeah, that's just like an overdrive, oh, got, like gotcha. an extra overdrive. Really, really cool. cool. So, yeah. Powering it all with a pedal power too. Yep. Well, that's a. That's yeah, I just crazy. try to keep it simple, um, and just let everyone else kind of do their thing. So. It makes a ton of sense. Well, <laughs> yeah. man, thank you so much for the years of great yeah, yeah. tunes. Have an awesome you, last tour, and we're going to talk to the rest it. of the guys. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. All right, now we're here with Dave Knudsen. Uh, we're going to talk about his awesome pedal setup. But first, <laughs> we'll run through some guitars. You've been sure. a PRS guy for a long time. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Love PRS guitars. This was the first one that I got right before the, well, I guess right as the band started, I got it used. Um, this shop in Seattle, Al's Guitarville. It's been my baby ever since. Um, I don't know, uh, the PRS just works great for me with like, you know, ease of tapping and ability to, you know, coil taps and lots of different tones, so. So speaking of that, what, what is, how did you get into tapping? Like, is that something that you've always been messing around with? Like, obviously, if you guys don't know, dude was in Botch, eh. the coolest, <laughs> one of my favorite bands when I was a kid, Thank especially, you. man, one of my favorite metal bands. But, you know, that was obviously a technical band as well, so you were onto that early, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, after, you know, and, you know, while Botch was going on and afterwards, there was a lot of, you know, great Chicago math rock, like Don Caballero and um, Storm and Stress and a lot of just cool bands doing not, you know, like flashy, right like Eddie Van Halen type More solo like American tapping. Football kind of yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, exactly. So I guess I was inspired by a lot of those tones um, and just, you know, figuring out a way to make cool riffs without you know, playing the guitar like normal, hey, here's my A chord, here's right. my D, here's my E minor. Like what else can you do? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was just more about trying to make my guitar not sound like a guitar. Gotcha. So <clears throat> with the PRS, is it something like with the scale length or maybe the fret size that is more comfortable for that sort of thing? Well, plan, just or? like the the action's great, the ability to access all the frets, yeah, like, so nice. you know, get up right here. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of guitars that have dual cutaways and all that stuff, but um, I don't know, the PRS is just, just seemed like it really suited the band and yeah. you know once it worked i was like let's just <laughs> <laughs> definitely works it why uh, <laughs> why why change it yeah if, totally. it, if it's if it's already working i get that i get that and then um amp wise I, i've seen you guys play in maces and a lot of different stuff but recently i know you've kind of switched it up yeah um i mean always with a twin um i mean i love just like this sparkly top end sure. and all the headroom um this is my first time using a vox um on tour I did have a Lone Star for a while, but I wasn't really using, I wasn't utilizing it as much, you know, for like the gain and the distortion. Sure. So I felt like going to something um, well, that I was more- I imagine you're going for the cleanest, biggest headroom and then doing everything with pedals. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, my pedal board has a lot of gain stages on it, so it's- <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks self-aware. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the PRS, the, the gold top was your first. That was my baby. And, and, that, and now this is kind of my- Is this your number one? Yeah, this is- Number one. I mean, on it's funny. Like a lot of times when we're recording, um, 
I mean, I'll try different guitars and, you know, Gibsons, Fenders, you know, any sort of different guitars. But most of the time I come back to this one, like the last record, probably 90% of it was recorded with this guitar. It just got, it's just got the, got the sound. The um, it's got these great pickups in it. These, what are they, 58? 5815s. Um, apparently they bought the wire machine from Gibson or whatever, so these are like spun with like the, you know, some of like the That's oldest, crazy. oldest wire. Are they voiced like a vintage pickup? Like a um, it's, it's more just a straight up humbucker. I, th I mean, I don't know. I'm, pickups aren't my, I, I'm not the most knowledgeable pickup <laughs> guy. Jake's more of a, a pickup nerd than I am. There's I just, I just know what I love. And so when it sounds great, then. Are these, do they both have the same pickups? Yeah. So the, the, I'm sure they react pretty similarly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. This this guitar just is nice because it goes up, you know, you know, two octaves, 24 frets, so you can get a little bit, you know, get up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so strings and gauges. Um, is your gauge like kind of? It's just the four, best for 46 to 10. You know, just regular. Um, just regular. This is always in drop D, and this is my E guitar. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, N there's no crazy tunings really. It's just you guys are either in E standard or drop D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's totally normal. It, it works. <laughs> I mean, it's great for you know fretting a chord down here and adding some. Have, have you played around with open tunings, especially with the tapping thing? You might be able to. You know, I have a little bit, but it's, I've never really written anything in it. It's fun to fuck around with. Sorry, no, um, okay. it's fun to mess around with. But um, uh, I don't know. Like, I just feel comfortable like this, and um, just really yeah. easy for me to write. Way less confusing too. Like I've well, like, having like different guitar changes and stuff. Would, all of a sudden yeah. you're like, what sounds terrible? Oh, it's in the wrong tune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it like, makes it easier for set flow as well. Yeah. You know, instead of having to, you know, get a different guitar for every song. Well, two killer guitars, two killer amps. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, let's dive into this. Sure, world. let's do it. Um, so your board doesn't look a ton different than the last time we talked. About it. Just a, a few minor changes. Yeah, I mean, uh, on the Planet of Ice tour, I did have this extra pedal board that came over here that was like a oh, full-on hog unit um you know with an expression pedal and the you know the hog enclosure is just so massive Big, yeah um and since this is the farewell tour a lot of these songs have you know these pedals have been the genesis from a lot of those songs so um i've messed around with that new helix pedal which is awesome um and i'll use that moving forward i think just because of versa use. versatility yeah. and everything but for playing this set it was it's just you know, important to use. I'm guessing you guys are playing stuff all the way back from like highly refined pirates into the yeah, or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's excited. I really hope to hear some songs from Omni. I love that record. Yeah, it's so so fun. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about how you get some of these noises because you're you're kind of an innovator with with this sort of sound. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, started off wanting to you know just like cut stuff up and sample it. You know, a la you know like Fortet or Caribou or some of those you know mid 2000 kind of um, EDM kind of sounds so you want to chop and screw it up yeah. yeah you know so i mean there's uh um you know a lot of times i like doing the uh
just stuff like that. You know, it was fun to mess around with. I mean, the double time and all the reverse things you can do. It's so fun. I mean, it's like, you know, endless possibilities. I mean, I just, sometimes I'm in my basement for too long and... I get that, yeah. <laughs> I think I need to get another DL4 for my board because that is so much fun. Yeah, That's no, so it's, cool. it's pretty great. I mean, and then, you know, I have a lot of gain stages going on. Normally, for the tapping, there's a lot of compression. Sure. Um, just, you know, for like the... You know, like the... Gotta help with the uh, keeping with, it all. Level. Yeah, keeping yeah. it just squished. Consistent, Especially yeah. uh, when you're, you know, fretting a chord down here and playing up top. It's nice to have that sort of everything together. Squeeze it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and then the whammy, you know, used for a few different songs. Um, it's you know just basic, you know. Um, I mean, I don't really use it too much with the, it's more of a harmonizing tool for me rather than like gotcha. a, you know, crazy Rage Against the Machine yeah. style <laughs> solo action. Or you, all the stuff that you would have been <coughs> doing with your hog, is that kind of taking the place of that? Yeah, yeah. It's just as, just easier and <coughs> a lot of the songs do have some whammy bits in it, so. I noticed uh, the last time we talked, you had actually four DL4s, yep. but now you have a timeline. Is that... Um, what are you what are you using that for that the DL4 maybe didn't do? I just there's so many cool f different delays in here. Um, a lot of the new record was written um, delay wise with the timeline. Um, I mean the DL4 has some cool delays as well, but the stereo ambience that you can get out of the timeline is just Sick, overwhelmingly yeah. awesome. Yeah, those things are <coughs> an incredible time waster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're so fun to play with, man. <laughs> and I love the sparkly DL for the 20th, uh, 20th anniversary edition. Yeah, anniversary. yeah. That, I think they only made like 30 or 40 of them, and they were like, do you want one? And I was like, of course. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've helped them sell quite a few I, of I, I promised myself I wouldn't put it on my board and take it on tour, and here it is on my board. I've taken it on tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that should kind of be on a shelf or something. Um, yeah. The loop station, are you using that just for longer Yeah, just, it, I really only use it for one song in the set. It's just, it's nice. You know, the DL4s are great, but they don't have any memory, so it's nice to be able to just, you know, have something right there, you know, switch you to a different call. preset. Yeah. Um, you know, the only th thing about it is that it doesn't re-trigger like the DL4, you know, you can't like, yeah. you know, you can't like stutter it. Like, yeah, that is a cool. So, but for feature. longer loops that are more simple, like the one I just played, it's it's perfect the for The DL4 only does like, what, 14 seconds, I think, right? Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. But also just being able to have it, have a pedal that has memory in it is That's handy, really yeah. helpful. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, what, I, this is a little tape on it, so I can't really see it. But uh, oh, this is a old. What is this? Like a DD5 or something? This uh, is for five guitar band. It's just a. They're just super reverbed out. Tone. Um, and then you have the mini tube screamer. Jake and I both have these, and they sound. And it's dime. Love that. Fan fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, pretty much. It's just cranked every, and then, everywhere. Are you ever using the Box of Rock and the Tube Screamer together? The Box of Rock is more like a boost. Clean I, boost, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Okay. And then sometimes I do use the fuzz for like a few songs like on Omni, like Secret Country and stuff like that, just to get the really gnarly um, fuzzed out distorted tone that, you know, the Tube Screamer could replicate it, but it just doesn't have the same guttural. Right. It's more like, of a distortion than it is a fuzz anyway. Right, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a little, sometimes this is a little too smooth, so putting this on. Getting a little hair on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Exactly. And then what about the Giga Delay? How are you using that? Um, the Giga Delay is kind of just a legacy pedal for me. I mean, I use it on quite a few songs. So familiar with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the main sound of Pachuca, you know, the... It 
it's just been on like so many records that there's no, there's no reason to replace it. It's you know, stay for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's it's got the the original studio tone. Well, man, I think that pretty much covers it. But I cool. really, really appreciate hey. you taking the time to talk yeah, to me. Yeah, no problem. Thank also, you for coming have out. an awesome last tour. Yeah, I'm, can't wait. I'm heartbroken, but <laughs> I hope you guys have some some time off after this. I'm yeah, sure no, it'll really be, it, it's going to be a fun tour. We're all really excited. Cool. So. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Last but not least, we have Jake. Jake, how's it going, man? Good, going well. Really appreciate you taking the time to do this, Thank especially you. Yeah. Uh, considering it's your last tour. Mm -hmm. um, Tallman's. Let's yep. talk about these. How did you? How did you start? Playing these, uh, Mike uh, Origo, Origo. I can't pronounce his last name. I should. I should ask him. Um, Mike from um, uh, Ibanez uh, gave me this guitar a long time ago, and because um, I basically have played Tele or Tele style guitars for a long time as main my main thing, and he had this that the LA shop made, and thought I'd like it, and it's awesome. Yeah, so. Um, cool. Does it? Do you feel like it? I mean, is it tonally pretty similar to a Tele? Or yeah, definitely. It's um, pretty Tele setup. And that's that's a road core. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's a it's got a really big neck, not like it's big this way, but it's kind of wide. Oh, that's kind of nice. It, but yeah. it, it feels really really good. Um, the mini bucker is that something that you wanted, or that's what they had in there? That's what they had, and it's like a it? different thing. I used to play almost exclusively on the neck pickup. And uh, so I, I liked that aspect of it, um, but now I don't. So there you go. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, change. And then you got a, like kind of a Strat style one over here. That's yeah. super pretty. This is yeah the Strat style Tallman. I swapped out the pickups with right, Righteous Sound pickups and had him make me a um, Tele style like metal backed Tele style pickup for the bridge. Um, and what else did I change on it? Oh, I had him paint it this insane kind of salmon color. I love it. It's like yeah. electric salmon or yeah, something. It's good. Yeah, it's It changes in different light because it, it's this color, but painted over with, with that. Oh, so. that's pretty cool. Um, but this one is currently your number one. Yeah, this is, style. <laughs> this is my main one. And it used to be just a stock um, made in Japan uh, Tallman, but recently had him sent it back and had them put stamped steel saddles on it and make it into an Esquire with a cocked wah and... So it's all like an outer phase kind of sound? Well, yeah. it's like um, it's like a halfway on wah pedal at the neck pickup. Get your Doppler on, bro. Yeah, and the um, single ply pickup without the hole, so... Gotcha. Um, so it looks kind of classic. Um, but yeah, this is my main one, it's awesome. Yeah, those, um, those are great. I've played a couple of them. I've always really, really loved them. Yeah. And you also are on the Vox train now. Yeah, I've been with uh, been with Vox for a few years, and they're that's what I've always wanted to end up with. So I've been kind of chasing down like a Vox style sound, and then started talking to Brian from Vox and had him. Uh, he had me uh, try out this hand wired, and it's amazing. You love so, it. Yeah, and this is the new S1 AC30, just a single speaker top boost channel, and had a cream back put in it instead of the stock gotcha. box selection. What do you notice about the cream back that's different? It's it's smoother. It's not as quite as peaky. It's just a little bit more of mm -hmm. what I yeah, like a little bit. Um, I don't know. It gives it just more of what I can, like what my brain thinks a Vox sounds like. Gotcha, yeah. So, And I'm yeah. guessing you didn't change anything with the hand wired. Uh, I put a Celestian Blue in it. Oh. Um, yeah, the Alnico Blue. So it's one green back and one blue. Oh, that's a, that's a fun combo. Yeah, it's great. Are you running these like pr pretty similar setting wise or? Uh, this one's a little dirtier and this one's cleaner. It's just naturally cleaner. For I wonder sure, if it's so. the signal path being hand wired or something. Yeah, that's it's so yeah. it's it's hard to get this one to have the grit that I um, kind of want. So having them both together, this is kind of a clean, chimier sound, and this is more of the little bit slightly grittier. Yeah. And then I'm guessing you're kind of throwing on some dirt with uh, you got a little mini tube screamer as well. Yeah, I I love that tube. thing. We always yeah. we've always had 
we've always played Tube Screamers, and then um, like I got the reissue 808 and really liked it, but then I tried this and I just like it much more. Have you ever AB'd the, the mini one to the to like any of your other ones? Because I'd be curious. Yeah, yeah. Pretty I, similar. I have. Um, I don't know what they did with this pedal. It's just smooth and kind of perfect. I had a BBE green screamer for a long time. Yeah, that was on your board last which time. Which is we talked, awesome. Yeah. Um, but it died. And uh, so this kind of gets me to where that thing was. And it's a lot lo less real estate on your board, too. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Cool. And you also have a couple DL4s. Yep. I got one dedicated to delay, and then the other one's for samples. For looping? Yeah. yeah, yeah cool. And then um, an organizer. Yep. Just for so, yeah, let's, let, let's hear some Yeah, of let's stuff. check it out. Um, so like the basic. So that's just amp? Just amp. Well, I got the EP booster oh, okay. on all the time. Just a little clean boost to yeah, jump it. Just to yeah. get some treble on it. It's nice. And then uh, this is the uh, basic overdrive. Is that, is that the Tube Screamer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are, the Soul Food are you using that more like a like a clean boost or like I use them together. Ooh, um, yeah, let's hear that. Mainly for like. <laughs> get more sustain. sustain. Um, there's a part in I'm using it only in one song on this. Uh, it's called White Mystery that has this like slow <laughs> feedbacky thing. So it's like an Ebo kind of Yeah, line. totally, yeah. totally. So that's that guy, um, and they're both amazing pedals, so I like to, uh, I like to use them both. Um, then the phase, basic small stone, I had a Max, well, I can't remember what the brand is, but the Phasor, that's like this big old. Uh, like the Mu, Mu it's like a Mutron. Mutron. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. Phasor. Those are huge though. Huge, yeah. and like um, real thick and nice sounding, it was just, um, starting to have some trouble with the knob, yeah. and so I went simple with the with the small stone, um, and the organizer. Um, usually use it with the phase at the same time. Yeah, that's a super fun modulated effect. Yeah, it's awesome, sure. and it's kind of replaced my. Uh, hog, hog as yeah, well, yeah. so a little less real estate. Yeah, I guess it kind of does that a little bit too. A little. Yeah, just organ sound. Um, this is usually this delay is usually on just a quick slap back. So like. Oh yeah, just to give almost, it some very room. subtle. Yeah. Um, and then I use this quite a bit. Well, this is uh, my real clean tone. I had it on the neck pickup selector <laughs> thing, but. And um, and then there's just a couple parts that I use that kind of, kind of like so cool. Oh, um, so it does decay. Yeah, it does decay a little bit. It takes a while. Yeah. Um, and see, one thing that this guitar that I like the Esquires with the three position switch is you got your kind of basic on where you can roll off the tone a little bit and kick it back. And that just is volume, no tone knob. Oh, so it gives it a little, a little brighter. And then with that, like clean, it kind of sounds dull and honky, but like with the overdrive, it's gives it a really cool uh, distortion lead kind of sound. It does for sure. Um, That's a fun trick. Yeah, and then the uh, this little dude, I just use for a sampler. Like, uh, what is it? So like, just kind of little little stuff. Yeah. Not nearly as much as Dave does, so just a little fill in. And then um, the switcher. Do you yeah. know who, who made it or? A uh, loop station. Gotcha. I believe. Well, you're singing as well, so that's got to be really handy. Yeah, yeah. and with just with. Uh, the, the ability, you can bypass all the effects at once and kind of get a few things going. Um, quietly. Quietly, yeah. so you're just. 
And just turn it all on and off, or like if you want to tap out a different thing but have it clean beforehand. So like preset so, preset your effects, turn it on and off. It makes a ton of sense. And then yeah. the A B switcher, your your amps are both on. Yeah, they're both on all, all the time. Times. Yep. Yeah. And that's kind of a new thing for me once I got the single twelve. So is it top basically boost. that switch is just allowing you to send your modulation effects into both amps at the same time. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Well yeah. man, I, I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, um, pretty basic setup. It's uh it's a lot less involved than Dave's. Um obviously, but yeah, it's just like a little modulation, some delay and some overdrive. Covers all the bases. Keep it sure. tight. Well, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to talk yeah, to us. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for the years of crunchy tunes, man. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge fan. This is great. Yeah, it's been a blast. You guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the magazine. If you don't already do that, it's an actual magazine. You can get it sent right to your house. Uh, check out other rig rundowns, review demos, uh, riff rundowns, all that fun stuff. We'll catch you guys soon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest rig rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.